Let's get the views then of the Palestinian ambassador to South Africa, Hanan Jarar. All right, we will uh, just establish contact uh, with the uh, Palestinian ambassador. But just to recap some of the points um, that the Israeli ambassador made vis-a-vis -vis Hamas and the civ civilian population on the ground in uh, the Palestinian territories, that this is not a war that is aimed at civilians, but really to essentially, and, and to paraphrase, wipe Hamas um, out of existence. So let's hear then from Ambassador Hanan Gerard. Good evening to you, Ambassador, and thank you for joining us. I'm not sure if you were able to listen to the interview that we've just had with the Israeli um, ambassador, but there is a distinction that the Israelis uh, and, and the Israeli government in that interview we're hearing are making between Hamas and the civilian population population in Palestine. What can you share with us about the realities on the ground, particularly in the south, in the, uh, in the south of the Gaza Strip? Good evening and thank you for hosting us in such, in such distinct times. Unfortunately, as we're speaking um, and now, I was um, following up the news that are coming immediately from Gaza. Um, just um, 20 minutes ago, Israeli bombed, Israeli occupation forces bombed the Baptist uh, hospital in, in Gaza. That hospital shelters thousands of uh, patients and displaced people. Uh, casualties are, uh, are between 200, 300 people who has been uh, killed in this, uh, we can say, war crime. Uh, this is for the time being. In 10 days of the Israeli genocidal war against the Palestinian people, uh, we can say that 2,500 Palestinians have been killed, more than 12,000 uh, Palestinians have been injured. Uh, more than 1,000 Palestinian uh, child uh, uh, has been killed, which means that every day Israel kills uh, 100 Palestinian uh, uh, children. Um, more than 300, uh, more than 400,000 Palestinians have been displaced from their homes, sheltering 92 uh, UNRWA schools. And yet Israel is continuing its uh, genocidal war, bombing uh, civilian inf infrastructure, schools, like now hospitals, universities, uh, residential places. More than one million Palestinians has been displaced from the northern uh, part of Gaza to its southern uh, part. Uh, no electricity, no water, no food supplies. Uh, Gaza Strip is on the edge of a humanitarian uh, catastrophe with Israel refusing totally to open any humanitarian corridor for humanitarian uh, relief uh, materials or even yeah. for uh, medication. Ambassador, uh, this just, is the situation. Before you go on, I, I'm just worried. We, we, and again, just the, the inventory of destruction, the deaths, the loss of life, the injuries, um, you know, a property and infrastructure that has been, has been destroyed is just absolutely breathtaking when you put people's names and faces and their families behind that, um, as we've heard as well on the Israeli side. Um, we heard from the ambassador just a short time ago that the water supply has been re, um, reinstated, so there is now fresh water being provided. We asked about the, the rougher border crossing and what will happen there in terms of allowing humanitarian aid in. What is your understanding tonight of the openness um, of, of, of that border for humanitarian aid to come in and an improvement in, 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 in the supply of water, for example, on the ground? Up to this moment, we have no news about the resumption of water supplies. Uh, potable water is not available. Um, uh, actually, the um, health uh, care facilities have been asking you and to come and take over because hospitals, health, health facilities are on the edge of collapse. Even the United Nations, they say that they don't have the capacity to interfere right now in, in Gaza. Uh, we all know that Rafah uh, crossing border is still closed despite the uh, media of the international community. Uh, United States is mediating, uh, um, Egypt and the Arab countries are mediating, everyone is mediating uh, for the Netanyahu government to open at least uh, uh, a peaceful uh, and humanitarian uh, corridor. Up to this moment, there is no news about uh, the open of um, Rafah. On the contrary, Israel is still committing war crimes against humanity, against the Palestinian people by shelling lately, only 20 minutes ago, the 
Baptist um, uh, Hospital, as I mentioned. Uh, more than uh, 50,000 Palestinian women are pregnant. More than 500, uh, 5,500 Palestinian women are due this month uh, with this catastrophic uh, situation. So you can imagine the humanitarian crisis that the people of uh, Gaza are living. And yeah. now, as we are approaching night, even the horror is more and more because Israel does not uh, um, uh, concentrate on on uh, the um, uh, uh, results. They concentrate on the damage uh, and they don't concentrate on accuracy of the targets, as yeah. they say. They concentrate only on the damage that they want to uh, um, uh, cause for the Palestinian uh, people. Uh, unfortunately, this is the situation up, up to this now. And our hearts are uh, really broken for what we are witnessing and we are what we are seeing yeah. in Gaza. It's a breathtaking scale of destruction and loss of life, um, Ambassador. The depths of uh, you know suffering are just are just immense. Let's go back then to an action that was, you know, in a sense, roundly or you know condemned quite widely. The um, what was called a provocation by Hamas um, to attack Israel, choosing the time uh, and the moment when it did and engulfing Palestinians uh, in what, what has been happening and the, you know, the scale of the tragedy over the last few days. What do you say, for, for people who don't understand what's going on, is there a separation between Hamas and, and, and the Palestinian people? Does Hamas represent the will of the Palestinian people? Is the Palestinian Authority, you know, does, does it support what, what's happened here? Just give us a, a quick lesson on, on, on the balance of forces in Gaza itself. Uh, well, thank you for highlighting uh, this thing. Let's start by the context. Gaza Strip has been under the Israeli blockade for more than 15 years now. During these 15 years, Palestinians in Gaza has been suffocated into uh, a small amount. 2.2 million people has been living in a very uh, small uh, piece of uh, land without the right to go out or to come in freely, without the right to have a uh, normal uh, uh, life, uh, suffocated into a small uh, area. Uh, four consecutive wars has has been conducted against them in these 15 uh, years. So the people in, in, in Gaza uh, were under a um, dire situation, uh, dehumanization on daily uh, basis by the Israeli occupation forces. So th th this is the context where the people are um, uh, living uh, in. Hamas is a political uh, party and is a resistance uh, group. Uh, and according to international uh, law, any uh, uh, people under occupation has the right, according to uh, international humanitarian law, according to Geneva Fourth Convention of 19, uh, Protocol 1, 1990, 1949, they have the right to defend themselves against uh, occupation, against um, the, uh, aggression, practice against uh, them with all possible uh, means. Maybe this is a situation that led to the escalation, that led to the ex explosion of the situation on uh, the ground. People has been subjected to aggression on daily basis for more than 15 consecutive years. Uh, this is the situation. Every now and then, Israel conduct a war against Palestinian people, use internationally prohibited uh, uh, weapons like the phosphor just to try on the people of Gaza. In each war, more than... Uh, uh, 2,000 people has been killed every time. One of the wars lasted 51 uh, days. Yeah. People are still, up to this moment, living in tents because Israel always blockade even the material to construct new homes and new buildings for, the, for Palestinians. So you can imagine the dire situation even before the eruption of uh, this cycle of, uh, of uh, violence and yeah. which brought again more against Palestinians. This is the context. We are always uh, uh, bridging to the international community to, to interfere, to provide protection for the Palestinian people against the Israeli genocidal wars that has been okay. committed against the Palestinian people. Ambassador, no let me come in there is. really quickly um, because, again, this is a subject almost, you know, you, you can't even discuss in a day, let alone a week. There's so much history and, as you say, context to this. How do you see this ending? Very quickly, how do you see this ending, Ambassador Gerard? We have to, to the international community should, needs to pressurize Israel, at least, first of all, to start by opening uh, humanitarian corridors. 
uh, Palestinian people need to receive water, need to receive electricity, fuel, need to receive uh, medication. This is number one. Second, the international community is obliged by international law to provide international protection for the Palestinian people. Uh, you cannot be the victim and you have to blame yourself also for what's going on uh, around you. You cannot lose lives uh, without international protection, taking into consideration that you are people under um, uh, occupation. The international community should act immediately to uh, bring an end to this uh, genocidal war against Palestinians. Palestinians are threatened by the Israeli government of transfer. Uh, they are left with no choice either to stay in their home and, and die or they have to flee and to scatter the refuge all over the world as he did in 1948. Yeah. Uh, the international community should shoulder their responsibility and force Israel to sit again on the negotiation table so that to discuss a peaceful route. Without right. peace for Palestinians, for civilians, uh, uh, not, none of the Israelis, none of the people in the region or the world will enjoy peace. This is a fact. Okay. Ambassador, thank you um, for talking to us tonight uh, on a night where, as you started out saying, uh, a whole swathe of casualties and uh, potential deaths after the, the bombing of that particular site. We appreciate you sharing your perspective with us. Palestinian Ambassador to South Africa, Hanan Jarrar.